Right, so now we're going to think about uh, what we mean uh, by a perfect gas and the motion of the atoms or the molecules within that gas. And this PV equals NRT equation is going to kick back in in a few slides' time. Because um, we're going to try and get an expression for the mean velocity of a given gas molecule at a given temperature. Right? That's essentially where we're heading. Now, um, we can make some reasonable assumptions here. Right? We can make an assumption that our gases are separated by a large distance compared to the size of the atom or the molecule. That assumption we made way back when we were looking at interatomic forces and potential en energy curves. Right? The separation uh, between water molecules, for instance, we calculated as being a factor of 10 larger in steam compared to liquid water. Right? So we went from typical separations between atoms or molecules of, of sort of 10 to the minus 10 of a meter in the solid or the liquid state to about 10 to the minus 9 meter in the gaseous state, so just above uh, the boiling point. Yeah? At atmospheric pressure. Right, now, these uh, molecules are all going to move around. They've got kinetic energy. They've got thermal energy. In other words, there is internal energy associated with the gas. Um, those velocities will differ. They're not all the same. They're moving around and colliding with each other. They're transferring energy. They're transferring momentum in these collisions. We get a whole complicated system uh, of uh, molecules moving around. And at a given moment of time, a molecule will have a particular velocity. Right? Um, and those molecules, of course, are just going to travel until they collide with another molecule or with the container in which the gas is held, right? one way or the other. Um, we're going to have to make an assumption that all of the collisions we're talking about are elastic. In other words, there is no energy lost in the collision. Directions change, momentum changes, but the total energy is kept the same. Um, so it's a sort of reasonable approximation, but it, it is an approximation. Um, now, if we increase the temperature of the gas, we know what will happen to the average velocity. It will go up. Right? Our gas molecules will move faster. That's, you know, that's not going to surprise anybody. Um, so these molecules now, when they do collide with the chamber, the container that the gas is in, uh, will do so with more energy. Okay, And that's what we measure as pressure. <coughs> All right, so you blow a, blow a balloon up um, you know, to a greater diameter. What you've done, of course, is to increase the pressure of the air inside the balloon by blowing harder into it. But actually, the walls of the balloon are just being held out uh, to whatever size it is because the air molecules are colliding with the, um, the rubber of the balloon skin. That's what's keeping it stretched. It's collision of gas molecules with the rubber. So you increase the pressure, you increase the number of collisions per second. You increase the temperature, you increase the energy of each of those collisions. Either way, you increase the pressure. Right? It's all down to collisions with the container. Um, if we squeeze the gas, pressurize the gas, uh, then again, changing the volume, right? then the pressure is going to go up because now the molecules have less far to travel before their next collision with the wall of the container and so on. All right, so there's a complicated process going on here that all just replicates uh, or demonstrates rather the perfect gas law in practice. Uh, so again, it's all understandable at an atomistic level. We're just talking about molecules moving with a particular kinetic energy and undergoing collisions. 
right? That's what all of this is coming from. Um, now, I did check this one out this morning, and it's it's relatively instructive. So I'm just going to show you this. Um, <coughs> when it loads. Okay, so this is a, a simulation. It's a two-dimensional simulation. Um, gas atoms in a box at some temperature or other. All right, I'm going to slow it down a little bit because it's actually quite tough to see what's going on. The colour coding is not because we've got different atom types, it's just some visual indication of the energy uh, of those gas molecules. All right, so the red ones are hotter, they're moving faster, they have more kinetic energy, in other words the blue ones are moving uh, slower, they have less. All right. So, um, that's fine, that's fine, We this is in zero G, right, so there's no, if we look at the atmosphere of the Earth for instance, so let's switch gravity on, you can see what happens in this simulation very readily we get a much higher density of molecules at the bottom of the screen than we do at the top. And it's, it's simply that there is an average uh, additional force, irrespective of whatever their thermal energy might be like, uh, that sends them, um, holds them more to the bottom. Turn gravity off again very quickly through collision. Um, so this is basically, this is just a giant game of billiards, all right, that's going on here. Lots of billiard balls flying around on the table, colliding with each other, colliding with the cushions on the wall of the chamber, and coming back and undergoing more collisions. All right, and because we said these are properly elastic collisions, which you don't get uh, in a game of billiards, because the cushions on the side will absorb some of the ball's energy, for instance, um, there is no loss of total energy in this system to the outside <coughs> world. It's all inside the box. All right? So some things are going to close, uh, slow down, some things are going to speed up. Now one of the things I wanted to point out on this was the graph down at the bottom here. All right? This is a plot of number of atoms on the y-axis versus their velocity on the x-axis. All right, so the colour coding here is the same as the colour coding uh, in the box. And you can see that there is, you know, there's a peak in this distribution that's dropping off relatively fast on this side, much slower on this side. If you remember back to yesterday's lecture, you'll remember this is precisely the shape of the curve that we had in terms of photons coming off a heated object. And actually that's because it's being controlled by some very similar bits of physics. So this is a uh, this is a curve that owes its shape to physicists like Boltzmann just like the radiation curve we looked at yesterday uh, does. Actually in this case it's called the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution rather than the Stefan Boltzmann distribution that we had yesterday, but very, very similar shape for good reason. All right, so what can we do? We can um, cool it down, so let's just take energy out of the system. Yes. Sorry, big problem. <coughs> yeah, well spotted. All right, so let's just cool the whole thing down. We'll cool it down a lot, and then it should become all right. We've actually cooled our bottom surface so much now that some of these molecules are finding it difficult to get off. And you'll notice what's happening to the distribution of velocities. All right, it's shrinking back to the low velocity end. Still the same shape of curve. There is still variation, but the variation now is uh, is much smaller. Let's just put a little bit more energy back into our system again. See how quickly it sorts itself out. Right? And it's all through collision. It's just transferring energy uh, from one thing to another. And our distribution of velocities now has moved up to the higher velocity uh, part of the spectrum. And you, know, you won't be at all surprised if I take the heater up uh, a little bit more, the whole thing speeds up, it goes somewhat bizarre, and our curve look has shifted way up into the into the hot region now. I'm going to take that off because it's just too 
much to worry about um, and start it again. All right, it's just too dizzying. Uh, we can try different <coughs> things on here, which is quite. Uh, these are basically these are starting positions for the simulation. All right, so we started with random speeds. In other words, different uh, magnitudes of velocities in different directions. Um, if we start them all with exactly the same speed, just a variation in direction. Right, and just watch how this thing sorts itself out, as it were, comes to equilibrium very, very fast. All right, so they're all starting at exactly the same speed. All right, it was at that point there, that huge spike we had in our velocity curve, but they're colliding with each other, and so we're getting all sorts of randomizing effects going on. Uh, and lo and behold, we come back to our Maxwell Boltzmann curve. So whatever we start our system off at, at whatever temperature, at whatever pressure, we're always going to have a distribution of velocities that has a shape uh, that looks like that. Um, oh, is there anything? I'm, I'm not sure that I... Okay, all right. That's quite a cute one. One gas molecule was caused to move at the beginning of this. I'll show you again. All right? Just to show you that it is a really, really um, quick process. So we're just going to launch one gas molecule into this system. And the whole thing comes to a, an equilibrium, comes to a distribution of velocities exactly of the same shape uh, that we had before. So let's go back to our um, starting place where we started with random speeds. Uh, this is where we came in on it. Um, if we look now not at velocity distribution but energy distribution, uh, then we get a slightly different shape curve. Now you would expect that. We're looking mostly, remember, at kinetic <coughs> energy here. which has a very simple relationship to velocity. But, but note what this means. Um, it means that we've taken our distribution in that previous curve and we basically squared it. So we don't get that shape anymore. We get a, a different shape. But that's, that's the way it comes out. Anyone want to see more of this? You're sated with it? Good. We'll move on then. Um, so this is our... <coughs> gas set up and as I said we have to make some approximations right? and one of, the, uh, one of the additional approximations we're going to make is that we've got point like gas molecules in other words there is no space occupied by our gas molecule now that's obviously in practice a nonsense every molecule occupies a bit of space but we're making this approximation on the basis that the separation, the average separation between gas molecules is much greater than the size of those molecules. So to a reasonable approximation, in fact to a good approximation, uh, we can assume that compared to the distances between them, uh, our molecules are behaving as though they are point like particles. Uh, we've already talked about elastic collisions, so there's no loss uh, of kinetic energy in these, uh, even though the directions and momentums and so on might actually change. Random velocities, now that shouldn't trouble you too much, having just shown you those simulations, but one of the important um, consequences of this, of course, is that we don't get, for instance, take this route, we don't get all the air molecules piling up down in that corner. Right? be fairly disturbing if that was the case. Right? So they are random. They're not only random in terms of the magnitude of the velocities, but the direction. Yeah? Um, so we don't get wholesale movement of mass of gas from one place to another. It is a, a random, randomized process. We're also going to assume, and this actually relates back to the point like particles assumption, we're also going to assume that we're working at low pressures. And by low pressures, I'm really basically saying the absence of high pressure. 
All right, atmospheric pressure is still relatively low. But the lower the pressure, obviously, the lower the number of gas molecules per unit volume. Right? And so that initial assumption about point like particles becomes more and more and more <coughs> valid uh, as we do that. And we're also, and this is a <coughs> fairly technical thing, we're going to assume that our impact time uh, can be ignored. All right? If it was the case that if two molecules come together, they stick for a bit, wobble around, and then come apart, we'd have a problem. So all we're doing is saying this is definitely more like a game of billiards uh, than, um, you know, than throwing lumps of blue tech together. All right? So that's essentially all that's saying. Uh, and then we get on, I'll show you this slide, but actually I'm going to come back to it next week. This is just to introduce what we're going to. Um, no, we don't need to see that. Um, this is the stuff that we're going to start on next week. Okay? Um, and I'm just showing you now so that you're prepared for it. Right? Those of you who are fans of Flash Hackers going to the Galaxy will know that telling people what the endpoint is can be quite important to avoid panic. Um, so this is the sort of place we're going to go next week and it's really not as messy as it looks we're going to have to assume a relationship you will get to prove this later in your career here it's not something we can do at the moment but from this and from some fairly basic stuff that's going to come after it like what we mean by a root mean square speed of our gas molecules we're going to come out with a really, really genuinely important equation that will tell us why the shapes of those velocity and energy curves that I showed you in that simulation take the form that they do. Okay, so we'll come back to that next time.